Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com here with part two of the tenth week. And I'm going to be looking today at a $10 multi-table tournament hand played by my opponent, Haley, um, in a spot where I think this Haley player played it fairly bad. Uh, the first mistake here is the limp under the gun. And the problem with limping here is that you're going to get a lot of limps a lot of the time, and you're going to take a multi-way pot out of position with a hand that is not going to flop great. However, one good thing about limping is you will let your opponents limp behind with stuff like Ace-10, which is always fantastic, because they may fold those hands if you raise. So while I don't really hate the limp, I think the right play in this situation at this table is to probably just fold. And I know that may sound really tight, but under the gun, when you are relatively short stack, notice this Haley player only has about 15 big blinds, I really think his play needs to be either shove or min raise or fold. I don't really think limping is the best option. Very rarely am I going to think limping is the best option when you're short stacked. When you're short stacked, there's always some value in just taking down the blinds, particularly with a hand that is not like a super premium hand. And while Ace Queen is good, it's definitely not super premium. And because of that, I think if I was in Haley's shoes, I'd probably min raise it and fold to a shove. But um, if if you feel less skilled post-flop, I think either shoving or folding pre-flop are both fine. If there were antis in play, like say we were playing 75-150 with maybe a 15-chip ante, so there's an extra 150 chips in the pot, I think shoving would be probably ideal. But I definitely don't hate a min-raise. And if you do min-raise with antis, you probably need to call off, because then players are going to be more prone to shove on you. Anyway, he limps. She limps, maybe, I don't know. Anytime um, someone puts in their name, Haley, exclamation part, dot, 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 smiley face, it makes me think it's a guy, so I'm going to call it a guy. <laughs> a guy trying to look like a girl. Um, whenever Jay Cardshark here raises, and this guy calls, this is a pretty tough spot, because Jay Cardshark's range here, if he's competent, which I am, is going to be very strong hands, but I don't really expect these $10 players to know that, and this is why I make a raise like this size, because I expect players with hands like Ace-Queen to just ship it all in, and that's really the whole purpose of the raise. However, what Haley should do here, if he decided to limp, is to probably call and take a flop and try to get an Ace or a Queen, and the really gross part about this is that if an Ace or a Queen comes, Haley can't fold, but... Half the time when he gets it all in, he's going to be in bad shape. Either in when an ace comes, I'm going to have ace-king, or whenever a queen comes, I'm going to have something like pocket kings or aces. So this is a pretty terrible spot with huge negative implied odds. But I still think calling is probably going to be right. And, you know, that's assuming Jay Cardshark is good. If Jay Cardshark's sitting here raising with, like, ace-jack, then folding ace-queen would be absurd. But I can tell you Jay Cardshark's only raising with very strong hands to this amount here. So, Haley likes to go all in, and, you know, if you think Jay Cardshark is raising a wide range, like, say, 9-8 suited and pocket sixes and ace-jack, stuff like that, I think shoving is actually pretty good. But the problem with this is, is that Jay Cardshark and most competent players are never going to be raising to 375 here without an extraordinarily strong hand. So I think calling preflop would be okay, or folding, but it's a pretty tricky spot. So Haley does go all in, Jay Cardshark gets all in with the kings, of course, and wins a nice pot. And again, I think all this could have been alleviated by just opening preflop to 300. Notice if he makes it 300 here, and this guy calls, there's going to now be um, about 800 chips in pot preflop. And that's going to make Jay Cardshark just jam it all in, because then he's getting pretty good odds to just shove. And then I think Haley can find an easy fold, because when there's a raise under the gun, a call, and then a fourth position shover, ace queen's going to be in bad shape. So. If I was in Haley's spot here, that's what I would have done. I would have lost 300 chips, and I would have moved on. And I know that may seem extraordinarily tight to raise fold ace queen with only 15 big blinds, but I do think it is the right play in this situation if that is how the action went down. Now, if uh, Jay Cardshark calls, say it goes min raise, call, call, and you get an ace or queen, you're going broke. But even then, it'd be three or four ways, and you'd get a 10-9-X flop or whatever we got, and you just have an easy check fold. So this is a hand where I think Haley went broke completely unnecessarily, and that's really the goal of poker is to get spots where other people go broke that you do not go broke. Because, you know, in poker, everyone really is generally going to get the same value out of their monsters, and they're usually going to go broke in their, like, super setup hands. But it's sort of the medium hands or the situations that are borderline where the good players don't go broke or get a lot, extra, a lot of extra value, and the bad players either win minimum value or go broke. And this is one of the spots where 
the bad players going broke where Jay Karchark would not have gone broke. So we do get it all in happily, and we win a nice pot and get a double. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to type them in the comment section. I, I check the comment section about every uh, every few days, so I'd, I'd love to answer any questions you have. And also, if you want me to review a hand for you, uh, please send it in. I believe there's an email link on the site, and then let me know that you'd like it reviewed. So this has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.